These pictures were made over a 30-year period. During that time, consists changed dramatically. High-level cars, pleasure domes, big domes were added. Observation cars were blended. Even the tightening lit plan of war bonnet F7s was eventually infiltrated by an ugly dual service duckling, the FP-45. In the Chicago and Los Angeles terminals, we've endeavored to follow the route of each passenger train through the yards in the customary order and direction of travel, and at the same time, keep the same type of motor power on the point and the same consist weaving behind. It has not always been possible to do that. What is here may show you different consists of the same train, but they are always headed consecutively in the same direction. identical to those used in the promotional train built by General Motors and sent on tour as the train of tomorrow in the late 40s. These flat glass domes were used for the super chief. To some they gave a sort of dated old-fashioned look to the train. Almost all domes built subsequently had more pleasing rounded glass. For the first time, many railroad passengers could enjoy a decent meal. The Santa Fe measured the value of Fred Harvey's franchise in the number of passengers it attracted. In many cases, the restaurants were not expected to make money. That wasn't hard to do if you served fresh oysters on the half shell in the middle of the Arizona desert. Harvey's diligence was legendary. It was next to impossible to provide fresh milk for customers in Arizona and New Mexico. The territory had few milk cows. It was too far to ship milk by rail and too hot to keep it fresh when it got there. He established his own dairy, but normal milk cows did poorly in the hot, arid southwest. He then started his own breeding farm to produce a desert-resistant strain of milk cow. 